Well, today is election day. Tonight, five Jacksonville City Council seats hang in limbo. That's almost a quarter of the 19 total. And you know, the Jacksonville City Council has big responsibilities. Responsible for adopting the city budget, approving mayoral appointees, levying taxes, and making and amending city laws, policies, and ordinances. But if you think, well, this election doesn't matter because it's not for a seat in my district or your district, well, think about this. Right now, there are two at-large districts up for grabs. One and three are up in the air. At-large districts have sway all over Jacksonville. The candidate for one has to live in the highlighted area, and in the at-large district candidate three must live in this highlighted area. Now, districts 8, 10, and 14 are also being voted on tonight. And as long as you're in line by 7 p.m., you are allowed to cast your ballot. So take a look at this map now, and you can see that all of Jacksonville will be impacted by who you put your trust behind tonight. And we're going beyond the ballot as the First Coast votes. First Coast News, Jeff Vallon is outside a polling place on the north side with more tonight. Jeff. Yeah, Jeannie and Heather, to emphasize what you're talking about, districts 8, 10, and 14 are all holding runoffs to decide district-specific council members, but it's a citywide runoff for groups 1 and 3, councilors at large. Maybe not the splash of the mayoral election in March, but we are told the mayor will be tweeting tonight as results come in, obviously keeping a close eye on things, and he knows these votes could impact priority issues in Jacksonville, such as crime and violence, also the disposition of Jacksonville Landing and other issues. See on the news every morning, which sort of disturbs me how, how the crime rate is going up. And I think that the gov the, at the grassroots level, they'll have a greater, not a greater, but they will have the impact that's needed to push it up forward. Also of note, one of the first council, the council's, new council's first voting items could be how and when to conduct a public vote about a half cent sales tax to help fund some $1.9 billion of upgrades for local schools in public schools in Duval. Now the mayor's office and some council members have told us that they oppose holding a separate vote to decide, to decide on that. Doing so could cost upwards of $1.3 million. So guess what, this vote could have influenced that as well. So far, turnout is expected to reach about 13, 14%. I just got off the phone with the election supervisor, Mike Hogan, and he predicted that. He said that right now, District 14 is way out in front with about 30% turnout. But of course, some of these other districts, we're in District 8, where only 90 people have showed up, uh, shown up at the Jacksonville Public Library here uh, this, uh, today uh, to vote. But of course, we have until 7 o'clock tonight to do that, uh, roughly an hour and a half to do so. We're live in District 8. Jeff Ballin, First Coast News on your side. Get out and vote, Jeff. Thank you. And remember, First Coast News is the place to be for results of the race. Tune in tonight at 7 on ABC 25, and you can get live updates in the palm of your hand if you have the First Coast News app.